During the farm crisis of the 1980s, one in four farms failed. Today, many fear another farm crisis is forming. In the third of a multi-part series, comparing then and now, Nicole Pates talked with a retired ag lender who had a front row seat to the 1980s ag crisis. In the 1980s, economics and politics teamed up to deliver a one-two punch to farmers. The 1980 Russian grain embargo cut off a crucial wheat market while interest rates were climbing as high as 20 percent. If you're paying 15 to 20 percent interest, it really snowballs quickly if you have much debt. So the main strategies were to reduce debt, and the best way to reduce debt was to sell stuff. Ken Knudsen was just starting his career as an ag lender in Rugby, North Dakota, as the crisis started around the country. In 1980, he moved to a PCA post in Fargo. That's when he learned how bad things were getting. It was a surprise to me, first of all, because the farms at Rugby were a lot smaller and more, I'd say, more conservative. But when I came to Fargo, there were already quite a few operations with significant losses. It only got worse through the early 80s, but Knudsen says some good did come of the crisis, including the Ag Credit Act of 1987 and other credit reforms. The banks uh, that weren't part of the farm credit system or FSA didn't have those laws written in, but they did it too when they needed to because it made sense, you know, and it got people through. Eventually, interest rates came down and crop prices and yields came up. Today, many farmers are in better shape than they were then, and the percentage of them in trouble is much lower. Knudsen says farmers have more options for help today, and he urges them to seek it sooner rather than later. This is Michael Pates for Ag Week.